listening to PetLifeRadio.com. Hello, you're listening to Animal Party on Pet Life Radio with me, Deborah Wall. And today I have back one of my favorite guests. She's also into cats and dogs, not just cats, not just dogs, just like me. So today we're going to be talking about dogs and the top three problems that we most often get asked about. Why doesn't my dog come? Why won't my dog heal? Or rather, how can I get my dog to come? How can I get my dog to heal? And, ah. Uh, It's so annoying. My dog jumps up. How can I get him to greet properly? So those are our three questions for today. Plus, I have some interesting news to add to the show. And welcome to the show, Darlene. Darlene Arden. Thank you. It's so good to be with you again, Deborah. Oh, well, I had some. Yes, yeah, lovely to have you. I had a really nice heartwarming story I saw in the news this morning about a dog named Seiki and, uh, or Seika, and he got an award from Purina's Hall of Fame award for, there was a terrible car accident. A lot of people were hurt and killed. And uh, one young man, a boy, was tossed from the wreckage and was out, exposed, terrible place in the countryside, exposed to all kinds of wilderness for 40 hours. And the dog stayed with him. The dog staved off cougars and bears. And the only reason the boy survived, he's the sole survivor of the crash, him and this dog, is because the dog stayed with him. So Joseph is the boy and Seiki is the dog. And it makes me choke up just to think of it. And they showed the dog on TV and he's just this, I don't know, he's kind of an ordinary old guy, overfed to be sure. Big thick coat, pointy ears, black, mostly white on the muzzle. Definitely passed his best years, you know. Well done, Seiki. Seriously, oh, yeah. well done. And this was his best year. That was a wonderful thing to do. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Dogs are so much more loyal than most people. Ooh, he risked so- his own life to do that. Oh, completely. He could have run for it. Why, mm-hmm. you know, and just to be able to interpret the situation well enough also. And then, you know, exactly. rescuers did get there and they saved the boy, they saved the dog. But a uh, lot of healing and to he be done. And he wasn't trained for that. You know, you know service no. dogs that are trained to certain behaviors, but he just did it out of instinct. Absolutely. Absolutely. And and he's definitely not a purebred fancy dog who's been through a lot of courses. You can, I don't know what he is, but if you had to guess. Whenever he is, he's hair. all loved. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Steak dinners for the rest of his life, no doubt. So, okay. So we also had something in the news before we get to our top three dog problems. I thought this was interesting. I think maybe dog owners and dog haters in Vancouver have watched a little too much CSI. I don't know what's going on in this one strata in Burnaby. But, well, first of all, lately, the local uh, cities around here, around Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada, have been passing all kinds of bylaws to try and Stop stratas from discriminating against service dogs, which I think just sucks that they have to do this. But they do. They have to write the laws so carefully so they to- can't all vote against some poor blind person with their dog and have the bill completely dog free. Now, part of the reason that's happening is because not always is the person needing the dog so obviously impaired. So sometimes you see the person, you think, oh, I don't know what's wrong with him. Why does he get to have a dog? You know, and I think there's got to be some education going on about the different uses. But this one, this dog hating thing going on in Burnaby, which is a uh, the suburb right outside Vancouver, is is just it's off the scale. Okay, these people in the strata, some dog took a poop a dump in the lobby. Nobody cleaned it up. Everybody got upset. So all the residents of the building are now having to conform to a mandatory doggy poop DNA test. So they can oh, in the test too. every dog in the building, and then next time there's a poop. On the lawn, in the garden, in the lobby, anywhere at all, it can be prosecuted. Oh, my goodness. I would move out. I'd just be like, this is too much conflict for me. I don't know. There's supposed to be cameras, but the cameras don't work. They should have just looked at the camera and seen the dog pooping and dealt with it. Well, yeah, that's kind of a no-brainer. But more to the point (laughs) is that pet owners need to be polite. And that means picking up after your dog because other people live there, too. And if you're going to have a dog, part of the responsibility is cleaning up after your dog. 
And it's not hard. It goes with the territory. So yes. be a good neighbor because you're only making it tough on everybody else. And everybody else who is doing the right thing has to go through the stupid screening because you're not a nice person. Oh, totally. You know, I really, yeah. The people who cheat ruin it for everybody else. That's why we can't take our dogs to parks and beaches that are almost not even in use because they might poop and the kid that comes the next day might step in it. And fair enough, you know, clean up your right, poop exactly. so we get to use but every course, place. I don't like going into a swimming pool where somebody's kid has pooped. So, well, you know, I, know. I think people with small children need to follow the same laws. Yes. And kids in general (laughs) just have to be more respectful of each other. I agree with that one. That's exactly what it comes down to is respect. So we have three problems to solve today. I think we'll do the first one, have a little break, and come back for the next two. The top three problems I always get on my bad dog tour is... Number one, my dog won't come when called. Now, usually what they really mean is my dog only comes when there's nothing better to do. Okay, so Darlene, what do you say to these people whose dog won't come when called at the park when they're late for work and it's just the worst time ever? Okay, what can they do? Well, the problem is they never started to train them to come. Never call your dog to you to yell at him or punish him then he's never going to come to you. If you say, here, buddy, and he gets to you thinking, oh, cool, and you say, look what you did. Do you know how upset I am? And you just chewed at my expensive shoes, and now what? Well, the dog's never, you call, he's not even going to want to look at you. So you call him to you for something good. When you use his name, it's something positive. One of the easiest ways, and I'm going back to the clicker again, is enlist your family or friends and have everybody sit around in the living room. And everybody calls the dog's name. And when he comes, you click him, say good, whatever his name is, and give him a treat. Don't call him in the same sequence every time. It has to be random order because he's going to predict it and be at the next person's feet waiting for his toy before they can even open their mouth because dogs are smart. People don't realize how intelligent they are until they start getting outsmarted, which can happen quite easily, especially with certain breeds. Once he gets into the habit of coming when he's called, because it's always for something good and he gets rewarded, whether it's playtime, a treat, something really happy, let's go for a walk. He's going to come. You need a really reliable come. You need to, that can save his life if he gets loose. You also need a really reliable stay because if he's across the street because he escaped and some car is speeding down the highway, you don't want to yell, come at that moment or he's going to get hit by the car. You want him to stay and down. And then when it's clear, come. Well, that's he's fair. Here. You know, you, I you see, want to make What sure I see safe. at the dog park is people say come and their dog looks the other way. The dog's like, oh, what am I missing? What am I <laughs> The dog, mm-hmm. or the dog completely looks at a 45 degree angle pretending, I don't see you. La, 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 oh, la, la, oh, la, la, <laughs> la, 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 Now, what that's about is not enough practice. Not enough practice over and over and over and over and over in situations where the dog wasn't tempted in the house, out of the house, in the yard, on a leash, on a long leash, on a rope. Practice, practice, practice till the dog just thinks come is fantastic she says come i come it's great party woohoo treats cuddles love exactly. it's fantastic i would never think of not coming because she's gonna let me go again i come i check in with her and off i go to chase the ball that that other dog's playing with and then off i go to swim in the ocean but what most people do is they save come for the very end of the walk and the dog he just thinks no 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 not done yet <laughs> And he just keeps on and going. You need to prove the dog. You need to practice come in a lot of places. Once he's coming reliably in the house, you start moving it outside. You start getting people to deliberately walk by to sort of distract him and make sure he comes. So it takes practice and time and patience and love, and it happens. Nearly because of the love. If you're not involved with love and you're not calling out of love, 
you're not going to get the same reaction. Oh, and that's so true. I mean, dogs are really empathic. They know when someone means you harm that's trying to do a number on you financially or trying to rob your house or someone who's had a little too much to drink that's walking through the laneway behind your house. When your dog's like 100 feet away, so don't think you can trick them when you're annoyed and irritated at the dog park. You got to really, really go for the Academy Award on this. If you're pissed off and irritated and late, you better fake happy like you've never faked it. You know, roll on the ground, dig a hole, play with the ball, go talk to someone, do anything but stand there muttering, the damn dog, that's not going to do it. (laughs) No, it won't because the dog knows better and it's not coming to be yelled at, to be punished if you're angry. Would you want to go running towards a person who's mad at you for any reason? You'll avoid them like the plague. A little bit of this is breed. So, for example, there's been a few times where I've gone to a home and the dogs aren't coming, and it's all about the breed. There's Mm -hmm. a Sheltie family that comes to mind. They had three Shelties, and the man was sort of ho-ho-ho, you know, poo-pooing the whole lesson, saying, well, I've had Shelties all my life, and none of them ever came, so I don't expect these two either. Okay, first mistake. But second thing they were doing was they would call the Shelties and then walk toward them. It doesn't work with Shelties. They like to follow. So if you walk the other way, they'll follow and overtake you. If you walk toward them, then you're signaling them that they're ahead. And and it just messes them up completely. So all I had to do with the lady of the house was teach her to call and walk away from your shelties. And boom, they'd catch up to her in no time. Heel walking around her. Like, where are we going? Where are we going? Where are we going? Not, see you later. See you later. <laughs> like, right, exactly. Like, oh, happening? <laughs> so some and of they're hurting things- dogs. So they want something to hurt. You give them an excuse and it's like, they'll hurt the children. That's yeah. Yeah. In a good way, if you do it right. But direction is key. So when your Mm -hmm. dog's busy playing with something at the park that he thinks is fascinating, and you're asking him to leave it, to go home and sit alone all day, it's going to be hard. If instead you show him he wants to go to the beach and you show him you're going to walk in the forest or he wants to go left and you show him you're going right, he doesn't really want to have you unescorted. He doesn't really want to be left. So if he really believes you're leaving and the action is somewhere else and you've got a plan and you're a good leader with a strong plan, oh, he's going to be your backup. He doesn't want to be somewhere else. But if you're standing there annoyed with him, focused on him, making all the action about his little misbehavior, you're going to be there a while. (laughs) If you are a long while, pack a lunch, you will be there for a very long time. (laughs) Yeah, you better take that meeting on your cell phone because you're not going anywhere. Okay, well, don't go anywhere. We'll be back and we'll be talking about heel and jumps up on Animal Party Pet Life Radio with Darlene Arden and Deb Wolf. Stay tuned. Don't leave this party before it's over because the best is yet to come. Only losers leave the party early anyway. Party on. Back in a few. Tired of wasting money on giant boxes of litter that don't work and don't last? Switch to World's Best Cat Litter, the only litter with concentrated power. So even a small bag lasts one cat 30 days. Outstanding odor control, quick clumping, lightweight. It's even flushable. World's Best Cat Litter. Everything else is just litter. Find it near you at www.itsnotjustlitter.com. That's www.itsnotjustlitter.com. Amazing Pet Expos is coming to a city near you. Admission is always free and your pet is welcome. Shopping, adoptions, free nail trims, discounted shots and microchipping, agility, a pet costume contest, and much more. Plus, meet the guys from Animal Planet's hit TV series Tank and Pit Boss online at AmazingPetExpos.com. Bring your pets to the Pet Expo. Hi, Jill. I see you and Bella are enjoying this lovely day as well. It's a perfect day for a walk. Isn't that right, Bella? And what a colorful ID tag you have, Bella. It certainly puts my Rusty's boring engraved tag to shame. Isn't it great? It's a dog tag art tag. Dog tag art? Yeah. Dog tag art makes the world's coolest pet ID tags. Pick from hundreds of cute designs or upload your photos or artwork to create a unique tag of your own. They even give you four lines of text on the back of the tag for important contact information. 
I love it. But do they hold up? We have to replace Rusty's metal tags so often because the information wears away. Dog tag art tags are some of the highest quality pet tags out there. They're made with super durable stainless steel. Your information is always legible and the tags are guaranteed for life. Well, I'm sold. Where can I get my dog tag art tag for Rusty? Dogtagart.com. Sounds great. We can't wait to get online and get a tag of our own. Dogtagart.com. We keep best friends together. Use the coupon code RADIO for a 25% discount off any tag. Active for Pets is a new wellness platform and app that helps pet parents save time and money on their vet bills. Stop paying for unnecessary vet treatments. Consult with a vet online. Get unlimited access to your pet's entire health history from any computer or smartphone with the Active for Pets app. Vaccinations, medications, test results, and more. Active for Pets gives you access to a team of expert vets for non-emergency care. Make an appointment before, during, or after office hours. Skip the waiting room and get a secure online vet consult on your schedule. Taking care of your pets is as easy as it gets with Active for Pets. Ready to try Active for Pets? Listeners get 40% off a one-year membership. To get this great offer, use promo code PETLIFE on the sign-up page of active4pets.com. That's A-C-T-I-V, the number 4, P-E-T-S dot com. Or call 888-512-2848. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. <laughs> .com. Hello, you're back on Animal Party, Pet Life Radio. It's a doggy party today. And when we go to a party and the dogs jump all over us and some people say, it's okay, I don't mind. And some people, sometimes you go to a house and dogs jumping all over and you hear them yelling, go off. And the dog's still jumping anyway. There's all kinds of variations on this theme. But uh, we've all seen it. We've all seen it. What do you think, Darlene? What should we tell people about the jumping up dog? Well, first of all, the dog is jumping up because dogs greet each other in somewhat the same fashion. Right around the time they're sniffing butts, they're also looking at each other and greeting each other. And they think that's proper greeting behavior. The difference is they live with us, we don't live with them, and to us that is not proper greeting behavior. So we need to give them something else to do before they get what they want, which is, hello, let me pet you. You're not going to do that until the dog is sitting properly. So you want to practice that. Once he knows sit, you make him wait and sit until he's petted. The problem is most people come in the door and teach the dog exactly the wrong thing. They're so glad to see the dog, which is understandable, that it's, oh, I'm so glad to see you. I've missed you so much. And you come in with the groceries, the dog's all over you. And sometimes you're just causing anxious urination because the dog is, has gotten even more worked up. So put away your groceries. Have your friends come over and help you. Tell them what you're doing and just have them come and ring the doorbell and make the dog wait and then pet the dog after the dog is sitting. A little practice, and it won't take him long to figure out that if he does sit nicely, good things happen. He gets a really nice greeting and maybe a special treat. How cool is that? So dogs need to learn how to behave in our homes, not in their world, but in our world. And it's not that difficult. I teach people to do a game where every time your dog jumps up, he's invisible. The same with the kids. If your dog's really big and boisterous and he's going to hurt people, you have him on a leash for this. So you, you don't let him hurt mm -hmm. anybody. And the kids have yeah, a treat yeah. or a ball, whatever he wants. And when the dog sits, he gets it. 
He gets cuddled and loved and he gets a ball and he gets a treat, everything. The second he jumps up, everybody takes a step back. And he basically learns, you know what? If I jump, I blow it. Nobody looks at me. Nobody talks to me. Nobody touches me. But if I sit, wow, they all love me. I'm the best. I'm in the center. Look at them. And you just see the dog and figure it out. we're actually doing the same thing because I tell people, put away your groceries first. Look at your mail and then greet the dog. Make him wait. And then when he's sitting nicely, he knows that's his time to be loved and snuggled and greeted. I've taken this a little further with kids to make it a game where, you know, the old game, what time is it, Mr. Wolf? I've adapted that and I show it on YouTube and it's in my DVD, so it's free for people out there. But basically, you you get kids playing what time is it, Mr. Wolf, where the dog is it with the dog's handler, with the grown-up or an older kid. Okay, I don't know this game. Maybe it's a Canadian game. Okay. Oh, the kids all line up and they ask what time is it and whatever answer, if the dog stays still and in sit position, then the kid moves that many steps closer and each kid is carrying a ball or a treat whatever the dog wants if the dog jumps up or barks the kid moves that many steps away and it doesn't take very long for the dog to say you know what i'm gonna sit right here and let those treats and balls come right over to me along with those children and their cuddles so it just makes it fun you know if the dog always gets rewarded for sitting and being well behaved and never gets much attention for jumping up he's not going to jump up jumping up is not exactly more natural. right it's it's really not it's harder work he just wants the attention he doesn't care how he gets it so just make sure you ignore the stuff that drives you crazy and it's sometimes hard to get kids to ignore it so that's why i kind of make a game out of it but basically reward what you like ignore what you don't and you don't and like it'll work. exactly it'll work. reward good behavior ignore bad behavior that also works with people so if you yes. have a problem, <laughs> I have done this. Okay. Well, let's go and to our third person. Like when people jump up on your leg, what do you do well, about that? Well, I didn't that? mean they were jumping up on your leg, but when people are behaving badly, even online, you ignore them until they do something, right. think something really good, and then you respond. And they catch on. They may not realize that you're training them, but that's exactly what you're doing. Humans through social media. Training Amazing. Humans. A little, okay. yes. I, I feel term. I kind of understand now what people who date you must go through. They get trained. Okay, so heal. How do we deal with heal? Now, most dogs, they want to get their first. Most dogs, you can tell which direction. You just glance at someone walking their dog and you know if they're on their way home or on their way to the park. Because if they're on their way to the park, the dog's out in front. If they're on their way home, the dog is behind. Okay, Uh that dog's in charge of the walk. Now, how do you get the dog to actually respectfully walk beside you? We'll go with Darlene and then I'll give my answer. And that will be our take on the top three dog problems. Well, what I do is start in the house off lead. And I pat my leg and talk happy talk, and the dog walks with me from room to room, and I periodically reward him with something, depending upon what he likes, if it's a favorite toy, if it's a pet, if it's a tiny treat, more and more. And then I, you know, will clip the leash on. If he's never had a leash on before, then he gets to drag it around for a bit, and then he gets to follow me. And if it's a very tiny dog... I don't want him looking at me. A lot of people like, look at me. Well, if you're that small and you look up that far to look at your owner's face, you could cause some cervical disc problems in the dog. So I take a little shiny sticker like kids would have and stick it to my jeans or slacks right around calf level or ankle level, depending upon the height of the dog. And I make them watch that so they know to follow that and they're following me and I give them a treat for tall people like me I suggest getting a dowel and attaching a wooden spoon to it just tape it on and put a little bit of peanut butter on it every so often when you're out walking and he's doing well you drop that down and let him have a lick of peanut butter and it comes back up and boy he learns to walk because yay get something good. After a while, you just fade that out. And they pretty much stay with you. If you have a real problem, he's lunging ahead, stop and have him 
realize that you've stopped and maybe you're going to go in the other direction. I don't know. But you're not allowed to go chase that cat or that rabbit or that squirrel. That's not allowed. That's not part of our game. So then we're just going somewhere else and we've got our own game to play. Sometimes I find that I watch a person walking their dog and it's almost like an argument. You can hear the dog almost saying, faster, faster. And you can see the person saying, slower, slower. But they continue to walk like that. It's a tug of war all around the block. And I just think if that person would just say heel, give a tug, and turn around and march the other way, or go around a park Don't car, even or go the down tug. the street thing. Yeah, or go down a street they, well, I'm sort of thinking of a big house. I mean, go down a street they don't expect. The dog all of a sudden says, where are we going? Oh, I want to go with you. Where are you taking me? Instead of saying faster, faster, slower, slower. So that helps a lot. And I also like when a dog's already mastered heel. And sometimes just because he's really clever and bright, even before he's mastered it, I'll introduce this. Because sometimes dogs like to be challenged, and they may not learn as fast Mm -hmm. if it's boring. So I like to just surprise them a little with some fancy footwork. Say heel and walk backwards. Say heel and take two steps to the right, then two steps to the left. Just keep the dog guessing, you know. And all of a sudden, the dog's like, wait a minute, this is tricky. I have to pay attention to this. And for a Border Collie, a standard poodle, now their actually eyes are sparkly and they're having a good time. And it's like you're all of a sudden worthy as a teacher. You know, now they really want to learn. And you better believe they're going to learn it. They're going to be amazing. You know, that heel is nothing now. You've done it. You don't even have to work on it anymore. A Doberman, well, they're going to always try and lead. So when a Doberman's always trying to lead, you have to show him, hey, you want to lead? No, I'm the leader. You think we're going north? We're going south. You think we're going west? We're going east. And you may have to do that at the start of every walk. But once you prove you're the leader, he'll stop testing you and you'll be able to walk nicely without that choking sound and the taut leash and the shoulder strain and the sweat. You don't ever (laughs) want any of that because if you trigger a collapsing trachea, there's no way back from that. And that's why I like to use a harness. I have gone into shelters and taught the shelter volunteers how to clicker train and they invariably will bring out the worst behaving teenage dogs who've been turned into the shelter because the owner didn't know what to do and is not about to find out. So they've thrown these perfectly lovely dogs away. And once I show them how to train what I call gentlemanly walking or ladylike walking, depending if it's a girl or a boy, and I show them how to train this and make it fun, and all four feet have to be on the ground and they're not allowed to trip you, It's lots of fun if you fall on the floor and break your neck. The dog thinks that's hysterical when they've reached the teenage stage, and that's usually when they get turned in. And when I can show them, hey, there's a game you can play with this dog, and he's going to have fun, Sarah, I'll drive away and see them out practicing with the dog. It's great. And then the dogs are adoptable. So let's think about adapting this if somebody listening is a volunteer at a shelter you can go and train these shelter dogs and make them a heck of a lot more adoptable oh for sure and even just walking them even just getting them exercise then they're not so hyper when they go to meet somebody you know and if you can teach them a couple of simple teach them something too yeah, like shake paw or sit down. I mean, if the dog is shaking mm-hmm. paw for new people, it's going to get adopted. And you know what? If right. you are a shelter volunteer listening right now, and I could ask you one favor, can you spend your time on the black dogs and the black cats? Because they're the ones Please. who stay the longest, have the least hope. They don't photograph as well. And there's just so many of them out there. So if you can make a black dog do something cute, like shake paw, high five, roll over, something like that, now you're talking. Now you're really Really doing a good deed. Exactly. It's an extra good deed for that. Get them a home. They deserve it. People need to learn to be colorblind. Yes, well... In, in a deeper way than just this. But it is true that the black dogs and black cats have less hope. And, you know, years ago, like, I had a girlfriend who used to only date bald men. And she used to say, well, come on, it's a no-brainer. I mean, they, they have limited options. You can get a way better guy if you will date a bald man. Well, I kind of feel that way about the black dogs and black cats. If you don't care about uh-huh. color, you're going to get a fantastic dog because everybody else is walking by him. I had a black uh, wolf cross shepherd when I was in my 20s. 
and he was a fantastic dog. But if he'd been in a shelter, nobody ever would have given him a second glance. They would have gone for the ones with the spots and the freckles and, you know, the smaller dogs and that kind of thing. So if you can go black with a dog or a cat, you won't regret it. You'll get an amazing pet. No, you won't. You won't. They're wonderful and sweet and terrific and don't ignore them. Okay, Darlene, we've come to the end of the show. We've done the top three problems. If you're listening out there and you've got more problems, you can always send us your request, your information. We're happy to talk about dog or cat or dog and cat problems. Maybe your cat doesn't like your new husband. Maybe your dog doesn't like your cat. Oh, there's all kinds of variations on this. We'd love to hear from you. So drop us a line and we'll cover your topic next time. Thank you, Darlene. Thank you, Deb. It's been fun as always. It goes so fast. It does. It speeds by. <laughs> well, until next time, everybody, this has been the Animal Party on Pet Life Radio. From me, Deb Wolf, be good to your animals. Let's Talk Pets, every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com.